Complete whiteout conditions. That didn't take long. All right, guys, here's where we're at. 2017 rolls on. Last night we combined pretty late. We've got uh, two to four inches of snow coming tonight. So we filled the wet bin all the way full. We even got a thousand bushels in the pits sitting there. We got three semis that are full. We got 70,000 pounds in the grain cart. We had everything ready to make sure this dryer was running full bore all night long. And at about nine o'clock, we knew we had a problem with the wet tank. The grain wasn't feeding out right. We were thinking maybe we had something stuck in the sump on the inside of the bin, but I don't think that's a problem because we opened up the other sumps and it fed for a while, but at about 11 o'clock it quit. We are completely full of wet corn. We can't do any combining today and we got two to four inches of snow coming. So we got a guy from the bin crew coming out. We're gonna have to tear this apart and find out if something's going on in the flighting of the auger in the U-joint inside there or what. So hopefully we can figure this out. Uh, Dad took off, he's headed about an hour away to pick up those grain bags that I mentioned. For those of you who haven't seen them, they are literally a, a bag. They kind of look like a, a silage bag if you've seen those. They're about 150 feet long. Uh, big white bag, the bags weigh about 450 pounds each. So he went to go get those and we're gonna hopefully fill some of those. Here I see the bin guy coming up the driveway now. So hopefully we can get something figured out here. So here's what we got. We got the flighting all out. We took the head off, loaded it into the pickup and the grain guys took it back to their shop. Ah, the U-joint was really messed up on that incline auger. The bushing was out. It was still there, it was still working. I don't know, I'm not entirely confident that it was that U-joint, anything to do with that U-joint, but we unbolted the flighting from the shaft in there anyway. They took it back to the shop and they're gonna put a new U-joint and a new bushing in there and uh, maybe bring back some new flighting because that stuff's getting pretty worn. So I hope that's the deal. I hope they're back soon. They told me they'd be back the morning of Thanksgiving. I told them if they're not back in two to three hours, I know where they sleep and I'm not afraid to go back to prison. So I'm hoping they'll be back before I have to take matters into my own hands and we can get this all put back together again because we got a mess going right now and we can't do anything about it because we have nowhere to go with any corn. So we got to get this fixed and hopefully quickly. I got it figured out guys. Here's what I'm gonna do while I'm waiting for those guys to fix that auger. We need a new filter on the diesel barrel here because this diesel barrel is running a little bit slow. So I'm gonna yank this off of here. I'm gonna take it into town. I'm gonna find a filter and I'm gonna have that fixed before anybody's back with anything. That way I'm not wasting my time sitting around here doing nothing because I can't stand that. Mom! I got diesel on my GoPro! All better. So the fuel filter's changed on the barrel. The GoPro is washed. Dad got back with the grain bags a little bit ago, and he's actually running them over to the neighbors right now because it's the neighbor that owns the bagger. We're gonna rent it from him. He's gonna load a couple bags on it, bring it over later and show us how to use it because like I said, this is a learning experience for us. So that's where he's at as far as the auger goes. Um, all they know right now is they gotta go south about an hour and a half to get the parts they need. All right, so long story short, we were able to squeeze a thousand bushels of corn into the wet tank while they're fixing that auger, which meant we were able to dump a truck in the pits, which meant we were able to get the grain cart full, empty, because we could put that grain cart into the truck. Because we're gonna need the grain cart to run the corn into the bagger. So after all that long turn of events, we ended up with enough room to get the grain cart open. So I'm loading that now, putting dry corn into that because we're gonna need to use the grain cart to fill the bags. So I got this loading right now out of two different bins. And we're gonna put the bags on this field right out here next to the driveway. There goes the bagger right there. So they're out there figuring exactly where we want to put the bags. 
and hopefully we'll have that up and going real soon here so we can at least be making some progress if we can't have the combine going. And we're semi full. You can see I got about 56,000 on the cart. I'm going to run out to the field here and see what these guys have got figured out. We've got this 10 acre field south of the house that we took the corn off of a couple weeks ago and we haven't tilled yet. This is going to work out nice. Look. All right. I think he's got his tractor in neutral. I think. And uh, the pressure on the bag, I think, must be pushing him forward. Maybe I'm wrong, but I actually got my tractor set. Maybe I'm going a little too fast there, but I got. I'm able to set this tractor to 0 0.07 of one mile per hour, so I can move this tractor really slowly. That was working pretty good. There, I'm going at 0 0.03. You can see our tracks and that tire are barely creeping. I think they're going pretty close to the same same speed there. So we'll keep doing this and learn as we go. It's going good so far. Well, that didn't seem so bad. We got, that was about one truckload, roughly a thousand bushels in there. Just took a few minutes. So we're gonna try and get at least one of these bags loaded tonight, but with that snow coming, we'll see how that affects it. If um, And if we can, I'd like to get them both filled tonight, whether it's snowing or not. It's about two o'clock now, so we'll see what we can get done here. We're loading another load. We got the bin guys here working, and we got a tanker load of LP. So now we're getting things done. We got the tractor running out there, got the bagger set up. The last couple loads went really smooth. I figured out that we can feed that bagger a lot faster than I was on that first one. And uh, we can move about at least twice as quick. Almost up to a mile per hour. It's gonna be about 20 feet per dump with the cart, which is about a thousand bushels. So now we're getting things done. Uh, just in time for it to start snowing here in a couple hours. I tell you what, even though we're not able to really do anything because everything's broken right now, we still got a, an LP truck here filling the bulk tank. We got two bin guys going, putting that auger back together. We got a seed salesman walking out to talk to me right now. Dad's back there getting some stuff ready so he can run down to this tractor so that I can meet him and fill the bagger. Because I think it's gonna take two guys to run that, at least for a little bit here. I wanna make darn sure that I don't catch the bag with the tire on the grain cart. That would be very much not a good thing. Okay, we are getting this down. So it takes about nine to 10 minutes to load this cart with about between 1,000 and 1,100 bushels. And then we, by the time we drive out here, unload it and get back to the bin is only about eight minutes or a little bit over that. So I'm gonna try it this time, actually, without a second driver in that other tractor. I'm just gonna start up the PTO shaft and put it in neutral and uh, let that thing ride all on its own. If it looks like I gotta steer it, I suppose I'll have to shut this down and jump out, but I'm gonna see if I can drive two tractors at once. <laughs> I'm doing it. I'm driving two tractors at once and I'm doing it with no hands. coming we got a little cocky with this we started feeding it a little too quickly and we sheared a bolt in the PTO I got that fixed already now we actually got a tire on the bagger that's going low so I'm waiting for the compressor to build up so I can get some air in there this is bag 11 we're just about done with here clearly the snow is still coming down so everything is a mess 
but besides shearing one bolt on this thing and dealing with that it's actually going pretty slick uh, we decided not to feed it quite as fast as I was originally hence the reason for the broken shear bolt I'm sure to see now because everything is white out and it's getting dark but you can see the bag there it's about 300 feet long I think I told you it was 150 earlier I was wrong it's uh, it's gonna be about it's a 300 foot bag and with the ends on it we're gonna get it to be about 270 feet long so it's longer than I thought but it's pretty cool things are going good this should be our last load here which will be nice I don't know if we'll get started on bag number two tonight or not yet well, it's gotten pretty dark out now, but we got to the end of our first bag. We learned for next time that when we get to the red stripe that marks the end of the bag, we actually got six or eight more feet we can go. We ended up with a lot of extra plastic. We probably could have fit 400 more bushels in there, but there it is. It's pretty long. Pretty cool. I hope it comes out of there as easily as it went in there. And I think we learned a couple things that'll make the second bag a little bit easier. Complete whiteout conditions. You give it two hours of snow and everything is white. It didn't take long. Thanks for watching, guys. Mm -hmm.